So this is the 2011 exam paper, um, and here we're obviously looking at a scatter graph. So we're comparing arm span to height in centimeters, and many people might know that there's supposed to be a one-to-one -one relationship between those. Your arm span's supposed to be roughly the same as your height. Sometimes we call it the golden ratio. So as an examination, a um, hundred measurements were collected of year 10 boys and girls, and the results were drawn up here. So we see the line of best fit and all the different points on there. Um, and the statistics were also collected, so we've got the mean, median, range, all that kind of stuff for the height and the arm span here. And we have some questions to answer. So first question, what is the height of the tallest person on the graph? And Again, here we're just going to look at height, who is the actual tallest person. So height is going this way across the graph, and it looks like they're going to be the tallest. With a height of... With a height of roughly 202 centimeters or something like that. Now the answer schemes on these might be slightly different than your approximation, but really I can't read that any closer than it's a little bit bigger than 200. So 201, 202, 203, something like that you put down would probably be fine and be accepted. So I'm going to say 102 centimeters. What is the height of the person with the smallest arm span? So in this case, we're looking for the smallest arm span first, so that's the lowest down the graph this way, and that's going to be this person here with the smallest arm span. They have a height of 160 centimeters. Their height is 160 and they have the shortest arm span. So here we see they have a height of 160 centimeters. How many people have an arm span between 120 and 155? The arm span, arm span between 120 and 155. So, sorry, 35. So 120, we're going to look between this line and 35 between that line, and we see that there are roughly two people with arm spans between 120 and 135 centimeters. And putting units in here is pretty important. So we've got centimeters and people. Part B, what? Uh, why was the scatter graph appropriate to show the data he had collected? A um, couple of reasons for this, but if you think about it, he's trying to make a comparison between two different variables, and the scatter graph shows those two variables, so he's able to compare them well. So he wanted to compare two variables. and look for a relationship between them. And remember, another word for relationship sometimes could be correlation, so you could say he wanted to look for a correlation between them. The scatter graph is a clear way to see a relationship if there is one between height and arm span. Okay. There are some points on the graph that seem to be unlikely measurements for a year 10 student. Give the height and arm span for three points, okay, so we want three, that seem unlikely. So these are outliers, I guess, so we're looking for three outliers. And as you can see, there's quite a few on here, so you, you really have more than three to pick from, so it doesn't matter which three you pick. I might pick the most obvious ones first, the further ones furthest away from the trend. Remember, outliers are ones that don't follow the trend, they're totally on their own. So one way I'm also looking at that is points that are, you know, kind of really far from that line. So I might take those three to look at. Important information for me will be to talk about their actual values. So that's 160 
and 60. 160 height, 60 arm span. This person might be 174 in height and 80 in arm span. And this person up here is roughly, I don't know, 105 in height and 160 in arm span. Um, so explain why we think they might be unlikely. So let me write those down real quick. Those are the points, and again that was height and arm spin. So explain why you think the they're unlikely measurements. Well, these two here and I might be specific, both of these students and mention both of them, 160 comma 60 and 174 comma 80 have unusually short arms for their height. And 160 centimeters and 80 centimeters, that's almost the same uh, same length as maybe just one arm. So 60 to 80 centimeters could be students that only have one arm or maybe they only measured one arm. They didn't realize the arm span was both arms, fingertip to fingertip. So that could explain why the arms are so much shorter than the height. Um, the student with 105 centimeter height and 160 centimeter arm span, arms, um, I guess we could say is unusually short for his arm span or her. Um, and a possible reason for this could be, you know, could possibly, um, you know, um, be an amputee, I guess. I don't know actually how you spell amputee. Probably going to leave that out. Um, possibly have, um, or possibly, we could say this, be missing part of his legs, or maybe he's in a wheelchair and he can't actually stand up to measure his full height. Um, could also be a miss measurement by the people who collected the data as well, so it could just be a mistake. But sometimes they ask you to talk about, um, you know, justify a possible explanation for these outliers, you know, what could possibly be happening. Um, you know, one of these students with really short arms could also just be like a little, you know, short-armed person. You never know. These things can happen. Um, going on to the next set of questions. So he concludes from his graph that the statement made by his grandfather is correct. On average, a person's arm span is the same as their height. So that's what we want to look at. Is the conclusion valid? And give at least two reasons for your answer. So he's making a claim here that the arm span and the height are similar to each other. And, I don't know, I think um, if we look at the graph, we've got a pretty good clear indication from our line of best fit that they're kind of following that nice trend together. That generally, they do match each other. You'll notice here, 130 and 130, that point's kind of on the XY line. What's another one here? 190 and 190, that point is also on the Y equals X line. So that line of best fit is basically saying any any points on that line are exactly the same. And since our trend line is saying that, we can also say in general, arm spans and heights are the same. So the trend line's matching that. 
another thing we could look at here could be our actual statistics. The medians for both of them are the same. The means are slightly different, but still pretty similar. Um, the range is obviously very different, but the medians and the means would be the main ones I would look at. So we'd have to think about a way to write this. So we could say the line of best fit is on the y equals x line. This indicates generally for this data set the arm span arm spans and heights of year 9 and 10 boys and girls are um, very similar. Uh, other information that we've got that we could look at but again looking at this one, the line of best fit is on the y equals x line. This indicates generally for this data set, the arm spans and heights of the year 9 and 10 boys and girls are very similar. So this agrees with his grandfather's statement that they are the same. Another point we could look at, like I said, is the means and medians. The medians are both the same at 165 and the means only have a 4 centimeter difference. So the median medians for arm span and height are the same at 165 centimeters. Also the means are very close, only four centimeters different. And again that's probably to do with the outliers. You could say what they are. It was 166 centimeters and 162 centimeters. So another reason, and here backing that up, um, or explaining what I'm trying to say by this, this means or I guess we could say this supports the grandfather's claim that arm span and height are the same. Any other point I might make is that um, he took a reasonable sample of 100 students, but only looked at years, was it year 9 and 10 students? Am I misremembering that? Oh, it's only year 10 students. So, take out the year 9. He only looked at year 10 students. So, he should investigate other ages as well to be sure it's always true. Right, so try to be specific when you're answering these questions. Make sure you're relating it back to what they've said. You know, can we support that conclusion? And be specific with evidence as well when you can, such as 165 centimeters for the medians, etc.